Hey, welcome back to Comic Book News. Today we're going to talk about Event Leviathan number three. It's a thriller. It's a whodunit. It's a mystery. And uh, I'm finding that the real mystery of this book is why am I reading it again? <laughs> Hey, welcome back to Comic Book News. It's me, Dan Shaheen. Today we're going to talk about Event Leviathan uh, number three um, by Brian Michael Bendis with art by Alex Maleev. So I inter I uh, reviewed the first couple of issues and um, I, really, I, I enjoyed it. I liked the setup and the premise and the idea. But at the end of my last review, I said, look, I'm going to give Bendis another chance. Not Nothing really happened in the last issue, so something big better happen. Uh, in issue number three and well let's go to the million dollar comics cam and find out if anything happened shall we um so in the last issue basically all that happened was that uh the uh, bat family confronted uh the red hood because damian wayne thought that maybe uh uh the red hood might be leviathan Leviathan wears a red hood after all. Is that the only reason? Uh, probably not. But they didn't give him any other compelling reasons other than in this issue they try and spell something out. So all that happened was the Bat family confronted Red Hood on the rooftop, said, hey, are you Red Hood? Are, are you Leviathan? He just sort of ran away, making them think maybe he was, and so they went after him. In this issue, we get to find out they had a big fight Beautiful art by Maleev. Cool layouts. I, I like his style. It's not everybody's cup of tea, but I think it's really good. Um, and 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 the my problem with this series is nothing's happening. Very little is happening. So um, uh, let's go. Let's look at some of these uh, 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 the title pages here. A person and organization named Leviathan has done the impossible and simultaneously taken out major pillars of the world intelligence community. The DEO, Spiral, Argus, and many others are gone, wiped from the earth. Green Arrow and Batgirl survived one attack. Batgirl was offered a place in Leviathan. No one has seen her since. Superman survived a kidnapping that only revealed that Leviathan is no longer in control of the woman who founded it. The legendary terrorist Talia Ghul. Uh... But it's Batman's young protege, Robin, looking over all the evidence so far, who wonders if Leviathan is his predecessor, uh, a.k.a. Jason Todd, a.k.a. Robin, a man whose special war on crime has been a point of controversy for years, a man who recently lost his best friend to a horrible accident, the infamous Red Hood. Wow, it sure sounds like a lot has been happening in the past two issues, right? It's been just jam-packed full of this stuff. No. No. Most of this, if not all of this stuff, happened in the pages of Action Comics, Superman, or in um, the, the the event Leviathan lead-in special, this $10 prestige format thing um, that was really just had previews of Lois Lane and Jimmy Olsen plus some Leviathan stuff. Um, it was kind of a cash grab, but it worked. Got my cash. So... Uh, Anyway, this is the recap. But as I said, none of that stuff really happened in this series. You had to be reading all these other books um, to get that action. But you've sort of seen it recapped here as they recap things again and again and again and again and again. Right? So um, we get to see the fight in a typical, confusing, double-page uh, bend is spread. Right? So um, do you read it this way? Do you read it this way? I mean, you would think it'd be really obvious if you were reading it the wrong way, but if you read this, you can read it either way and it sort of makes sense. Continuity, panel to panel. It seems like you're probably supposed to read it this way, but it's so moment to moment and jerky action that, you know, it doesn't matter much. You don't get much out of this. What's happening here? Green Arrow getting shot with an arrow while getting shot I, I don't know. So, um, this is a pet peeve of mine. Uh, a confusing panel layout, doing double page, stretching um, pages across a double page spread without making it very clear that that's the case. Because what's the difference between 
that page and and this page should i read this page that way too well clearly not but you know it's not always that obvious and i'm kind of dumb so anyway what do we get out of this we learn that jason todd is probably the toughest robin and he's able to beat up all the other robins and all the bat family including plastic man and green arrow and manhunter I find that a little bit preposterous, especially Plastic Man. Like, what could you do to plast- to stop Plastic Man? Why could Plastic Man not have stopped him? It didn't make sense at all, what I read here. Um, so we get to see him fight. We get to see him talk with Lois Lane and say that basically, yeah, I'm the perfect patsy. If I were somebody else, I'd probably think it was me too. So whoever Leviathan is, they have all the records, right? They have all the records, uh, uh, and they know the secret identities of all the superheroes because that's what these spy agencies did. So they know me, and they know I'd be the perfect one to play against them. Well, first of all, just because they kidnapped the entire building, you know, it's not, did they have, like, physical files sitting around with Superman's identity in it and stuff? Not necessarily. Like, it's probably in a computer database, encrypted. Maybe they have access, maybe they don't. I don't think it's a given that because you the building disappeared that they know who Superman and Batman is, right? Because if they did, why would they have... A lot of stuff that's happened so far does not really make sense if, if that's the case. But whatever. So we get to see more confusing stuff. I didn't understand at all what's going on here with Green Arrow's Arrow and Manhunter's thing while he's talking to Lois Lane. But it's pretty clear Red Hood is not... Leviathan. So they've spent several issues just wasted when it could have just been like, hey, are you Leviathan? No, I'm not. Let's team up and find him. No, we had issues being uh, fight scenes that went nowhere, meaning nothing, being dragged out for issues at a time. Not a fan. I'm sorry. I like Bendis, but I don't like this book. I need some... If you're going to make an event comic and you're going to call it a thriller and you're going to say it's event Leviathan, you're going to put event in the name then it something better happen, man. There better be some events because not too much is going on here. What we do find out, well, you know, from previous issues, Amanda Waller was in the Fortress of Solitude for a little bit, right? And uh, which we knew from another issue, not from Event Leviathan. But, and then she escaped, I guess she disappeared because they're in the Bermuda Triangle now, not in the North Pole for whatever reason. Um... Why that makes sense, again, it really doesn't. But anyway, she put some kind of surveillance device here that Kryptonian technology could not detect, but but Robin could find because he looked under the couch and he found it sitting there. And he's like, whoa, how co- what's this? And, 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 and the, the Kryptonian artificial intelligence that's controlling this thing couldn't see it. I, what? It doesn't make sense. We get to see now finally where's Amanda Waller. She escaped. She's somewhere, some other country, maybe Cuba, I don't know. She had her sort of little, the same other end of the device where she's listening in. She's spying on the Fortress of Solitude and then she destroys the box for whatever reason. So they can't trace her maybe? That might make sense. But then what happens? Leviathan just shows up. She says, I know who you are. And he he calls her Buffy Bluffer. Now, that's either brilliant characterization because of who Event Leviathan really is, and that's exactly what that person would say in the scenario, and when we find out, it'll make perfect sense, or it's just stupid. I'm not sure yet. I used to have enough faith in Bendis, but reading some of this stuff, I'm starting to lose it. For instance, she confronts him and says, look, I know that tech. Your mask is algorithmically designed specifically to create the perfect amount of fear and leadership confidence. You're a con artist. What does that mean? That's really dumb. Algorithmically created to generate fear and leadership confidence? You know, you could say it's specifically designed, but why do you have to say algorithmically designed? It's just to try and sound smart when you're not. I'm sorry, Bendis. That doesn't sound smart. That's techno babble. And, um... I don't know. I want a little bit better out of my out of my comics, I guess. So anyway, we don't get to find out who he is yet. He or she. He's here to kidnap Waller. They make some clues about who it might be. And then what happens? But Superman shows up. Wow, so Superman here, he's got Leviathan. He's Superman. He's with Leviathan. If he can't 
just grab Leviathan and end this, then who can? What can be done? Is, is he that powerful? Well, I guess maybe. Um, can you tell I'm a little frustrated by this series? Had high hopes. And look, I'm going to read the rest of it. I'm going to buy them. It's on my pull list at uh, Scruffy Nerd Herder, Eureka. And uh, I plan to live up to that commitment and buy the comics I ordered from my local comic book shop. But man, it better get get better. If I, I, I'm making a promise right now. If we get to the end, if we get to the sixth issue and really nothing happens and we don't have a very satisfying resolution, I'm going to drop a lot of my Bendis books. I'm already not on board yet for Legion of Superheroes. I might give it a try, but Bendis is writing so much and is spread so thin that I seem... I hate to join the crowd of naysayers, but I'm not enjoying um, the quality of some of these books right now. Too much repetition, bad pacing, and too little happening. Despite having usually very great like superstar level artists working on the series. So it's frustrating in that way when it's pretty to look at. It's written by a writer who I know can write better than this. <sighs> but it's not so great. I'm giving this one, I don't know, a 6.4. Not happy. I mean, it could be worse. If it weren't for the really great art, um, it, I think it would be uh, in the fives. But uh, I'm going to read the next issue. I'll keep you informed. I read these comics so you don't have to. And, uh, you know, uh, thank you for watching these videos. If you haven't already, please like, comment, subscribe, share these videos with your friends if you think they would like them. And uh, most of all, hey, just thank you for watching.